Hello everyone, I'm Maria Downey and welcome to this edition of the Video Vault. It's that time of year when Alaska gardeners anticipate just the right time for planting, which could be difficult in the state with such challenging weather conditions, especially this very snowy spring season. And it's especially challenging to those who make their living farming. Families that have worked on just the right formula for decades. Well, in this 2017 story, Ron McBride takes a look at the history of agriculture in our state, how it started as an experiment as more people headed north to Alaska. The first farmers in Alaska planted seeds for what was to become a never-ending experiment in which with every crop, they learned something new. Despite the giant cabbages and pumpkins. He's got a very nice pumpkin right there. I'm feeling nervous to tell you the truth. When it comes to agriculture, Alaska doesn't always come to mind. I know that the uh, fishing industry is great up here, but I don't know much about the farming industry. People are always surprised at the diversity of the fruits and the vegetables on display here at the state fair. So you get to see a lot of different things like bok choy and collard greens, turnips. Turnips that can grow up to more than 12 pounds or this 40 pound rutabaga. These are Alaska apples. That tree is, is got to be approaching 70, 80 years old, if not older. Part of the legacy of the Matanuska Experimental Farm, which opened in 1915, before this hospital was built next door, even before there was a Palmer or a Wasilla, back when there was a tiny town called Matanuska. It's one of those things that fewer and fewer people remember because it's gone. Although the town did not survive, only the train tracks, farming did take root in the region with help from this experimental station. There were grand visions of millions of acres of farms being developed in Alaska. Alaska had seven agricultural stations funded by the federal government. The first were in Sitka, Kodiak, and Kenai because early agriculture advocates didn't know much about the state and assumed the interior was too cold. The momentum for that interest picked up in 1898 when the gold rush happened and there were a lot more people in Alaska. The need to feed these newcomers to interior Alaska led to new stations in Rampart and Copper Center. The Rampart station was one of the most successful of all, whereas the caption from this photo reads, there were turnips as big as his head. The first apples that were grown in the interior of Alaska were, at least the first one that we know about, were grown at the Rampart station on the Yukon River in, in, in before 1920. And so um, the, the report, I think, shows three apples were and so a success. but. Nevertheless, something no one would have anticipated. Each station exchanged personal accounts in an annual publication, some not very successful, like one from a man in Kotzebue. His report went something along the lines, um, got it to sprout, then it froze. At the Kodiak station, there were other challenges, like when the Katmai volcano erupted in 1912. What you see here isn't snow, but ash. They had a sheep herd and a, and a cow herd uh, that, that couldn't eat because it was, in some cases, several feet of ash. And one of the immediate consequences was the bears also couldn't uh, eat, and so the bears started eating the sheep. The Kodiak station was eventually closed. It's still a spectacular setting. In fact, this building at the Matanuska farm came from the Kodiak station, taken apart in Kodiak, and rebuilt here. So now you know why it's called the Kodiak Cottage. So how old is it now? 100 years. Today, only two of the original agricultural stations remain open. This one in Matanuska and another in Fairbanks, where most of the research now takes place. Hard to believe, at one point, there were more than 100 scientists based here. People who came here were really were pioneers in the sense that they were coming to something that was largely unexplored for purposes of agriculture. And some of those very families still work those fields to this day, feeding Alaskans with some of the tastiest veggies from across the world. 
all because we live in the land of the midnight sun. And thanks for joining us for this edition of the Video Vault. You can look at other editions or all the day's news, weather, and sports on alaskasnewsource.com. Have a great day, everyone. See you soon.